So one of the things we see uh, is that sometimes, not always, but sometimes, you know, the output of a machine learning algorithm of an Internet of Things sort of sensor-based insight is you need a human being to behave differently. Uh, and that could be as simple as analyzing how somebody's home is consuming water and then presenting them with a water bill that helps them quickly understand what they could do differently. You know, change the valve in the toilet or, you know, you have a problem with your faucet in the sink, in the kitchen sink or something, right? Now, that's actually very challenging. How do you boil down all this data and the outputs of these intelligent algorithms to a very simple message that someone will actually follow? They'll understand it, they'll be motivated to do it. That's a really interesting problem. So that's one example of data presentation and making it um, work. So, so another example is these machine learning driven systems often have to have a human operator somewhere. So we're a long way away from the self-driving car that has no steering wheel and you can't see out the windshield. There's going to be some expectation for some time that there's going to be a, a human attendant in some way. You're going to be paying some attention. Um, it's kind of a legacy technology, the human driver, but it, you know, there'll be an expectation for 10 years or so that you are somewhat aware of what your car is doing. Now, the car then has to communicate what it's doing and why. There has to be a simple way for you to understand that, yes, your car knows there's a child about to cross the street and you don't need to panic, for example. And what we've seen, one of the early places where these sophisticated automated systems have been deployed is in commercial aircraft. And what we've seen is a number of accidents where the automated system is trying to do one thing, the human operator is trying to do another, there's a conflict between the two, and it results in a, you know, a hard landing on a runway or someone crashing into a mountain or something. So this challenge that we have now is not how do you develop an interface that allows someone to operate the machine, it's more how do you develop an interface that allows someone to attend to a self-operating device. That's a new challenge. So for those children who are looking for a promising career in the Internet of Things economy, who are perhaps less inclined towards algorithm and mathematics, maybe more inclined towards design or psychology or more human factors, that's another opportunity. Thank you.